So, uh, listen, uh, we're going to pray in a second, and I'm excited. As always, want to remind you, God is blessing our church. We continue to grow, and uh, if you don't know this, first and third services are a little less um, um, packed than second, so if you like a lighter service, you can check one of those out. We're thrilled you're here. We want to always ask, as a family, we're all about the next generation, if you have kids and they get loud, please step out quickly so that we can have distraction-free worship. Everybody can hear from God, take notes. You should all sit on the edge of your seats and wait for God to speak to you. Take notes because God will speak to you if you're prepared in church about whatever he wants to speak to you about, but he will uh, speak to you. I had a friend before we pray, and my friend uh, asked me this, and it became a kind of a thing we'd say to each other. He said, hey, man, are, are you preaching this weekend? He said this to me once many years ago, and I'm like, yep. And he goes, give him heaven. <laughs> give him heaven. It's weird, isn't it? Think about that. Give him heaven. Wow. You know the truth? The truth is the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of us. And all of us have the power and authority to give this world heaven. And this world's dying for heaven. And we, you, can give people heaven. Wow. Think about that. Let's pray. Father God, it is your time we turn to your word, the word of God, the living, breathing, infallible, and errant, inspired word of God. And we ask you to speak right to our hearts right now. We believe we should leave here and never be the same. A spiritual thing should happen, and we should be hungry to grow this week, to grow closer to you, to be better people, and to, to own who we are in Christ, and to give the world heaven. Father God, I pray for you to speak and challenge us, God. Uh, bring us closer to you. Bring us closer together. We love you and praise you. We want to be the real deal. Use us up. In Jesus' name, let's all agree and say amen. All righty. Uh, we're in a series called The Walking Dead, and we're talking about becoming spiritually alive in all areas of life. We opened up and talked about grace and the power of grace to, to change you and to allow you to grow and change. Last week, Pastor Sean gave this message on the power of words and speaking life, and it was an incredible message. If you didn't listen, you need to get the CD or download the app on your phone. We should all have the app. You can listen to all messages it is one of the most well-received messages we've ever had around here. People came up to me, what a great, and it was an incredible message. So make sure you don't miss that. Share that with folks. It might be a great tool to get them to God and let God uh, uh, rock their world. This week, we're going to talk about how to live fully alive, how to live fully alive. My goal in this church is for all of you to experience the risen living Savior personally and never be the same and that your funeral would be full of stories about how you were fully alive. No question that God rocked your world and you were fully alive. That's my goal for every person that comes in the door of this church. And it'll happen if you seek him. So that's, that's what we want, how to, how to live fully alive. Here's what I know. We all want to be fully alive. God gave us this gift of life, and life is a gift. And deep down, every child, regardless of the environment they grew up, regardless of their parenting, parents in their lives, we want to be fully alive. I want you to think about the first time in your life that something happened and you felt something or strains warming in your heart, and maybe you began to feel a little bit alive in a different way. I'm going to share some stories with you about different times I felt fully alive, and we're going to look at how God wants us to feel fully alive, all right? Let me tell you about the, the, the first time that something happened in my life, I felt fully alive, and I remember it. I remember, I can like picture it. It happened in junior high school at a junior high dance, all right? Now, all of you think back to a junior high dance. I just went to dance because you, you're taking a step of faith. Going, and then and two things happened that I had no idea would happen that night. Number one, I heard the coolest song I had ever heard in my life. I didn't know what the song was. I went home. I had to do all this research to figure out what that song was. And that song became an important song in my life. Still to this day, an awesome song. All right? So that happened at this dance. The other thing that happened at this dance is... I met a girl and I liked it, all right? I met a girl and I liked it. I liked it a lot, all right? So here's what happened. You're at the dance and the little junior high guy's like, oh, somebody dance. It's like, you're kind of scared. You don't say you're scared, but oh, you're gonna ask somebody to dance? And so, so this song came on. I didn't know what this song was. 
I'd never heard a song like this. It started out real slow and it took you on this journey. I've never heard a song take you on a journey like this song, but it's ba 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 And it's, there's a lady who knows all that glitters is gold and she's buying a stairway to heaven. That wasn't bad for me right there at all, right? That's pretty good, <laughs> right? So that song came on and it's like, oh my gosh, this song, what is going on? And these guys, you're gonna ask anybody to dance? And I'm like, I don't know, I've never done this, but whatever, you gotta cross this line of fear. So I knew there was a girl named Jessica. If I'm gonna ask anybody to dance, I'm gonna ask this girl named Jessica to dance. So here you walk through the fear, here's the perfect song. I said, Jessica, you wanna dance? And she said, yes. Okay, now what do you do, right? So, by the way, young people, I gotta fill the young people in, because this is true. Old people know this, young people don't know this. Dancing was different back in the Led Zeppelin day, all right? There was no grinding, or there was no grinding in school, all right? There was no grinding in school. They had a thing called slow dance. I don't even know if they have that anymore, but it was called slow dance, all right? So what we were doing during Stereo Head was slow dance. So I asked Jessica, sure, so we walk out on the dance floor, find our little hole, and then it's time to figure out how do you dance. Luckily, Jessica helped me, she was tall, and Jessica put her hands around my neck. And I looked around and I put my hands on her waist. And I looked at Jessica, and she looked like a girl. <laughs> An awesome, God-made girl, right? And then she pulled me in. This happened. She pulled me in a little closer than this. I'm, every guy's going to know what I mean right here. And I smelled her. She smelled like a girl. When you're a guy, girl smell is awesome. Girls smell awesome. The first time you get a whiff of a girl, you're like, they smell awesome. Then we're trying to figure out how she looks like a girl, smells like a girl. She pulls me in a little closer, not crazy close, no grinding, but a little closer. Oh, oh boy. And I'm going to tell you something. She felt way different than my mom ever felt to me in my life. <laughs> way different. And there was like a strange warming in my heart and I felt fully alive. And whatever this feeling is, I want to pursue this, right? So what do you do? Well, you're in junior high and so many people in junior high spend their whole junior high career pursuing these relationships, right? And then if you're not careful, you can spend your whole high school, the whole deal is all about that. Some people never graduate from that. Some people spend their whole lives just trying to find a relationship, a girl or a guy or different relationships or sex to, to for this, to be fully alive. And there's more to life than that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But some people never outgrow that. Some people think that's all there is to be fully alive. Fully, no, there's way more than that. Later on in life, I, I, there's a hole inside of us all right, that no thing can fill, but we all want to fill it with something. We have to learn through spiritual wisdom how to fill this hole. So later on, I experimented. There was a hole inside of me with alcohol and drugs. And, and if, you don't, if you're visiting, I'm in recovery. We talk about this. We're a very open church. And I experimented, and here's the deal with drugs in me. I loved drugs. Parents, listen up. Tell your kids the truth. I raised my kids, both their parents are in recovery. I said, hey, if you think you're gonna try drugs and hate them, you're wrong. The problem with drugs is you may try them and love them, that's the problem. And the problem with drugs is if you use them, they, 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 you use them to fill a hole inside of you, it will never be enough. And the problem when you use a substance to make you feel better about yourself or fill this hole inside of you is many people cross a the line. They never know when. They never know they did cross the line, but they cross the line and it becomes a problem in their life. And there's never any going back from when you cross that line. The only thing to do is abstain from that behavior and it will kill you. And so many people never graduate from life any farther than that. 
They use relationships or different things to make them, and they think that's being fully alive, and there's way more to life than that. Later on, there's one last thing that I pursued, that we pursued to make me feel fully alive. Um, It was 15 years ago from this last Tuesday, November 8th, that my dad passed away. After my dad passed away, I went through a really, really hard season in life. I, I looked at my life, and I, I'm, 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 I, I began to think about bucket lists and things, and, and there was one thing that all my life I wanted to do, and, and ever since I was a little boy, I loved motorcycles, loved them, like some weird thing about it, just loved motorcycles, and, and my dad, when I was a little kid, got me a little motorcycle, and my dad died, and I just talked to my wife and said, honey, all as I dreamed of maybe being able to have a Harley someday, I never dreamed I'd be able to have a Harley, and we looked at our finances, and we said, well, you know what? Um, Maybe we could squeeze the Harley in and we could try it a year. And if we can't afford it, we'll get, we'll get you Harley and you can sell it in one year. At least you'll know you had a Harley. So we looked at our finances and I knew what I wanted. It was called a soft tail Springer. There's a front end on Springer. I thought they were the baddest things in the history of the world. And the way the back end looks and oh, and they sound awesome. And I wanted black. If you're going to get a Harley, get a good, a nothing. never go wrong with the black Harley. I'm going to tell you that. Write that down in your notes. Never go wrong with the black Harley. And so I found one in Kettering, and, and I rode that, I rode that home in December, and and I remember the I remember going down Dorothy Lane, and it's like oh my gosh, and then I remember getting on the highway, and it's like oh my gosh, and I get home, my wife's like, well, well, how was it? Did you freeze to death? Was it a bummer? I'm like, no, no, honey, let me tell you something right now. If that was the only ride I ever talk, took on that, if it cost that much money just to ride that home. It had been worth it, all right? That's what that was like to me. It was awesome. If you're not careful, you can use Harley Davidsons or boats or vacations or cars or houses or vacation houses to fill this hole inside of you and make you feel fully alive. And it'll never be enough. Anytime you try to use relationships or alcohol or drugs or things to make you feel full, it'll never be enough because there's a hole inside of us that only God can fill, all right? So, so here is point number two, and it's important that we get this. You will never be fully alive, never, until you know your purpose, what you're made for by God. Think about this. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have this in the message last night, but I, I had a dog. I had a, a dog once. It was just a great dog, great dog. But I'll tell you something. When that dog saw a bird, this dog became fully alive. It just went crazy. It had some, God made this dog to hunt birds. And it went and it was like fully alive because that's its purpose. And God made each and every one of us with the purpose. And until we're living the purpose we're made for, we'll never be fully alive the way God wants us to be fully alive. Parents, listen up. The number one thing you can give your kids and your teenagers is a purpose for life, to know their purpose. As your church family, we're here to help you with this. It will change everything. I remember like 15 years ago, I heard this psychologist say, the number one reason that teenagers get off track, they have no purpose for life. And what we're gonna talk about today is their purpose for life. Married people, listen up. If your marriage isn't clicking on all cylinders, the key to having a healthy and fully functioning is to have the same purpose. Listen, listen to what God says. Uh, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh in all ways, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in all ways. So they're no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not say. When a couple comes together, and if you don't have this, and then you come to Christ, this changes it. Now we have a purpose, the same purpose together. It changes everything. If you don't know this, it's like God's right here, and, and, and wife's right here, and husband's right here. And if you're both growing closer to God, then you're growing closer to each other. It changes everything to live in a marriage for the same purpose. Your family. Does your family have the same purpose? This changes everything. That's why we say, you take, you take one day a week and make it sacred and special. You come to church and never miss because that's your purpose. Come to church together to have the same purpose. We live for the same thing. This is, this is so important. So um, you will never be fully alive until you know your purpose. Now in a second, right now, I'm gonna tell you what your purpose is in life. 
This is so important. This is so, so much the world never gets this. They try to fill this hole that nothing will fill but this. Here's your purpose in life. Everybody, everybody look up here and listen. Just this is so important. Here it is. Your purpose in life is to know and live for God. That is your purpose in life. When God, it says God thought of you before you were born. And your purpose in life is to know and live for God. Listen, listen to this. Have you, ever, have you ever caught this word in here? Listen to this verse. Like, I know this verse. I got a specific word from God about this verse this week. You did not choose me. This is God to you. You think you did. You didn't choose God. And if you're visiting, you're here for a reason, and God is pursuing you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. God chose you and you and you. And then he says, and, and, I, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And when you're doing that, that's your purpose, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Now, the key word there that I want you to highlight and underline and, and really work through this week is appointed. You didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed. What's that mean? God decided beforehand for you to know and live for God. When you were born, God decided for you to know him and live for him. He appointed you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far off in track in life you got. It doesn't matter how much sin you have. He has a plan for that. It's all washed away. Now God has appointed you to go and bear fruit. fruit. That's your purpose in life. Only that will make you fully alive. Look at this. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. What? What do you mean? God says, don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust will destroy. It's like that's temporary. Then it says, store up treasures in heaven. What? What do you mean store up treasures in heaven, God? And God's saying, I appointed you and chose you to bear fruit that will last in heaven. And he's saying, don't store up treasures on earth. You change heaven. That's your, your job. That's why God made you for you to change heaven, which will last forever. Think about that. You got something bigger to do with your life? I challenge you to give me something. You can change heaven. Whoa. So, so believe it or not, this is what I remember when this happened. Do you get this? Do you believe this shit? Because this will make you fully alive. You're like, well, I was in, I was in uh, engineering, civil engineering. I had all these cards. Mike Berry, project manager, CTL engineering. I became a Christian. I made up little business cards. Mike Berry, follower of Christ, Philippians 4.13. Because I'm like, my real job is to change heaven. This civil engineering thing, that's just a little gig on the side to pay the bills, baby. My real job is to change, your real job is to change heaven. And if you in any way can change heaven, that will, that will rock your world. You will never be more fully alive than when you're changing heaven living for God. So how do you do that? How do you, how do you first it says you, you, um, you, you have to get to know God. Your purpose in life is to know God. That's what this plan is about. Promise you, you do these five things, you'll get to know God. 10 worship every week. So right there, if you're visiting, just right now, check. We're never, try to hear. We're never missing church. If you go on vacation, go to church. All right, number two, Read your Bible and pray daily. We want to teach you how to do that. First, get you a great study Bible. Recommend the NIV Life Application Study Bible. If you don't have a great study Bible, go get one. It'll change your life. I, I promise you. Number three, commit to a God job and serve. You ever notice that these people that serve around here are a little nuts? You ever notice that? They're fully alive. The breakfast people are crazy. They're fully alive. My favorite people in the world are the parking lot people. What heroes for God. To stand out there in the morning when it's freezing cold in a church and be like, I am so glad you're here. Send such a great message. What heroes. Man, they love Jesus to do that. The people that serve back in church, they are fully alive. Changing heaven. That's why we want all of you to have a God job, to know you're changing heaven. Heaven. Commit to a, a small group. It's so important that we, if you really want to know God, 
You need to be in a group that's learning to know God together. If you're like, well, tell you what, Mike, I'm kind of a disciple. So I don't need to be in a small group to learn. I'm, I've arrived. <laughs> well, then you need to be in one to make other disciples. That's what the church is all about, making disciples. That's your greatest fruit in your life. And then we commit to, a, to tithing, a, a generous lifestyle. God changes your heart. That changes everything. You come here like, okay, honestly, I'm kind of a selfish guy. That was me. I came here and my wife wanted to put $5 in the offering plate. I'm like, no, 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 no. Then she wanted to put 20 in. I'm like, she has flipped horror lid. 20 bucks? That's a grand a year, honey. And God changes your heart. And that's part of becoming fully alive. So you do those things, you can't help but become fully alive. Your purpose in life is to know God and live for God. So here's, here's your homework this week. It's on the bottom of your study sheet. Each day, take one step to grow closer to God. I want to challenge you in the morning before you get out of bed, say, God, I want to grow closer to you today. And then it says, before you leave the house each morning, ask God to provide you with an opportunity to change heaven. Say, God, provide me with an opportunity to change heaven. Help me to see a way I can change the world and change heaven. God, today. And then at night when you go to bed and you put your head on your little pillow, and I hope it's cool because I love cool pillows, all right? That's just a little. Then you review your day and say, what could I have done better? And God, help me wake up in the morning and live for you and look for an opportunity to change heaven. So every day, wake up in the morning and take one step to grow closer to God. Now, here, confessions of a slacker pastor. All right, here, here you go. This morning, I got out of bed and forgot to do that. All right? But I remembered when I was walking around Dayton at about 5.30, and I just did it then. All right? So there's your homework. The application, look for an opportunity to change heaven. Now, if you're lucky... You will have your moment where you realize this, and this changes everything. Only living for God will make you fully alive. There's no relationship that'll do it. In fact, if you do that, you're going to make that person your God, and they're always going to come up short. Only living for God will make you fully alive. There's no drug that'll do it. There's nothing you can put in your body that will make you fully alive, and it, it'll be permanent. There's, it's impossible. There's no toy you can buy. There's no thing you can do. There's no amount of money that will make you fully alive. Only living for God will make you fully alive. What would be your biggest thing that God would want to do in your life? I challenge you to look at that and go for it and live for God. You only get one life. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I want your funerals to be a, a celebration, a party that you got it, that you were fully alive, that you lived for God. Joshua says, choose this day who you're going to serve. The message version says, if you decide it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose some God. You can choose motorcycles. You can choose this. You can choose cars. You can choose sex. You can choose drugs. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And when you, you all cross the line where you're coming to church. You're like, I don't know why I'm here. I came here. I didn't want to be here. I didn't believe any of this. But it crossed the line. I don't know why, I just as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And much to my surprise, I became fully alive. It changes everything when you begin to live to know God and live for God. Here's the deal, church. If you're new, hold on and listen close. It's not my job to feed you in this church. It's not my job to feed you. It's my job to teach you to feed yourselves and get out of here and go be the hands and feet of Jesus and live for God. Only then will you be fully alive. If you just sit there, oh, feed me, and I do this on Sundays, you're never going to be fully alive. But if you learn to feed yourselves and live for God, it'll rock your world. I was a baby Christian, and I was taught that you live for God and do something big with your life. So I'm like, well, all I am is recovering alcoholics, so I guess I'm going to try to start a Christian 12-step group. I started this little Christian 12-step group, and I met a, a lady named Lori in there, and we had kind of a, 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 she's a friend of mine. I guess maybe I was sort of a mentor to her. I was the leader of this group, and 
we became friends. And then God called me to be a pastor. And it's like, that's real funny. God called me to be a pastor. You got quite a sense of humor, you know. And then God picked me, chose me, whatever, to go to this little dying church in Medway, Ohio that was 70 people. And I announced to the group, I'm, I'm not going to be leading the group anymore because God called me to be a pastor. I'm going to go pastor this church of 70 people in, in Medway, Ohio. I know none of you know where Medway is, but I'll be over there. And this lady goes, you're going to Medway? I live in Crystal Lake. Can I go to your church? And I'm like, not now. It stinks pretty bad. Come in a year or two when we get all the bugs worked out. You don't want to come now. It stinks bad. And she came and she wanted to start the first AA meeting here. We start an AA meeting and it's been going over 10 years and thousands of people have come to that AA meeting. This lady is fully alive. She serves, she makes coffee. She's so alive, it's such a blessing to see her. And this church is full of people like this. So then she starts going in all these uh, juvenile detention centers where kids get locked up because the whole world's given up on them. And she goes in those all the time to share the good news of God's love with all people. This lady is fully alive. You can't be more alive. She just shared with me that one of the kids in the, in the facility that was big on her heart committed suicide. And I just saw, I'm so sorry. And she goes, I guess all I can do is go share the good news of God's love with all the rest of them and reach as many as I can for Jesus. That's right. That is the, the greatest thing you can do. I met a guy named Tony. I had known Tony before I was a Christian, before he's a Christian. And I knew his wife before we were Christians. And his wife started coming to this little church, the old church. And, and um, she started catching on fire. She was becoming fully alive. It's like, wow, she's changing she's spiritually alive so we had this class and her husband's kind of a he's a lot like me he can kind of come off as mr grumpy pants i'm, I'm aware sometimes i can come off as mr grumpy pants right and so i'm like uh man i gotta talk to this guy it's very uncomfortable this could end up bad but i'm like can i challenge you with something we were in a basement of the old church and he's like sure what, what do you got and i'm like dude i don't want you to get mad i'm just challenging you love he said, your wife is on fire for Jesus. It's real. She's going, bro. She's going with you or without you. She's going to follow Jesus all of her days. Here's my challenge for you. Get on fire and go with her. Or you're going to miss out doing this with her your whole life. You're going to miss it. And he, must, must, he didn't punch me. Thank you, Jesus. And he caught on fire. He started going to church. He started growing spiritually. He got in a small group. He got a Bible. And he became a disciple, a follower of Jesus. And now he goes in Kairos ministry and into prison and tells people about the love of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? And then I met this lady last week named Tricia. And she was telling me how, all, how this church has changed her life because she's fully alive. She goes, my ministry is children's ministry. You know why? And I'm going to go, no, why? She goes, you know why? No, why? She goes, because I'm telling all those little kids that God loves them and he has a plan for their lives because no one told me. And she's just fully alive. I want that for all of you. Let's go back to the song, the greatest song ever. There's a line. It says, if there's a bustle in your hedge grow, don't be alarmed now. It's just a spring clean for the May Queen. I have no idea what that means, all right? I just threw it out there. Then it says, dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know there's still time to change the road you're on? It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. God sent his son for you to wash away your sins. He has plans for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you and give you a hope and a future and for you to change heaven. You, every one of you to change heaven. So go. Give them heaven. Give them heaven. Get out of here and give them heaven. That's your purpose in life. Go live it. Go live it. Nothing will make you more alive than that. Let's pray. Father God, I love you. We love you. If you don't know the love of Christ, if you're new, the first thing is to make a commitment. And you say, Father God, right now, you can make this commitment in your heart. I, I want to follow you. I don't understand everything. Forgive me for my sins. I want to follow you. Welcome to your new family. We're here to help you grow and change. And then, and then as a family, we're here to take steps of faith 
to grow and be the real deal and radical followers of you and to live for you. And may our funeral be a celebration of what we have done for you, for you, God. And then we will go be with you forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.